What will it take for you to up and leave to an entirely new state or country? Maybe some cold hard cash. In this video, let's talk about the impact of remote work on ruralization and how you can get paid to move. COVID-19 has led to a profound shift in work culture and out of necessity, the rigid in-office regulations that once were enforced are seeing some major changes. While there's still restrictions for most remote jobs, more people than ever have an actual choice of where they want to live. Because if you're not forced to live somewhere for a job, the world becomes your oyster. You could rent a lake house in Vermont and watch Bernie Sanders shop at Trader Joe's. You can move from an overpriced one bedroom in New York to a much larger three bedroom in Nevada where there's no income tax and prostitution is legal. Which brings me to my next point, the re-ruralization of Western economies. The challenges that rural communities have faced haven't been small. There's been a growing divide in the prosperity between rural and urban or metropolitan areas all over the world, with more resources flooding into big cities because typically these are the cities that attract larger candidate pools and make more sense for businesses to move there. But now that's changing. You might say, now Jordan, some people enjoy the big city life like stepping in human feces in San Francisco or watching someone openly smoke crack on Skid Row in Los Angeles. But the reality is for decades, people have been moving to these cities just for a job when they actually prefer living a more simple life in a quiet town, maybe even tending to their own farm animals. I don't know why I'm making these weird accents. So the question is, should you move and what can you get for moving? And I want to thank Move Buddha and World Scholarship Forum for a lot of this information and I'll link their article below so you can find these specific links to these programs. Minnesota, for example, offers a 218 relocation package that's providing digital nomads with up to $2,500 to cover moving expenses, access to a community concierge program, and a free co-working space. Vermont's remote worker grant program can give you up to $10,000 over the course of two years to relocate there. Tulsa has a remote work incentive of 10K plus. Alaska's offering 1,600. Nebraska's up to 5K. Hawaii had a remote work program where they'd pay for your flight, give you discounts for living. I mean, I'm gonna live in Hawaii. I mean, that's pretty cool. Kansas is even offering a cash incentive and believe it or not, a free year of Jimmy John's sandwiches. There are plenty of opportunities outside of the US as well. An island in Greece is offering 500 euro per month for three consecutive years for people to move there. I think the population is like 24 or something like that. Candela, Italy is offering up to 2,000 euro to move there. Albany, in Switzerland is offering over $25,000. Sicily, Italy even has a one euro scheme where they are selling properties in abandoned villages for one euro. Now restrictions apply, there's a separate process for each of these opportunities, so if any of them interest you, please do your own research as a lot of this changes over time and by the time that I'm delivering this to you, it might have already changed, who knows. But the point is, smaller towns are able to use the changing dynamics of work as an opportunity to draw talent and of course, money. An influx of remote workers brings economic development in a more sustained fashion than just tourism. So at this point, there's just one thing you have to worry about, is the Wi-Fi good? Well, at some point, they're probably gonna microchip all of us with Wi-Fi and 5G and Neuralink and whatever the hell else Musk and Bezos and Zuckerberg want to put in us. Nonetheless, in the US alone, hundreds of rural fiber companies are making massive investments in their networks to provide services to towns. Co-ops, local providers are making their investments in their communities because they know it spells long-term success. My guy, Gonzalo Hall, he created the Digital Nomads Village in Madeira, Portugal to revive a completely barren village and he loaded it with a co-working space, good Wi-Fi, and nomads from all over the world. So it can be done. There's certainly trade-offs to all this. There's potentially unknown consequences and negatives, you know, especially bringing foreign people into places where locals may be priced out or where locals and the culture, the cultural gap may be there. But from the looks of it, you know, moving can help you line your pocket. It can give you a better quality of life and it provides some of these towns with the chance to grow and, and reinvigorate. So should you do it? Well, speaking from experience, living in 15 different countries on five continents and multiple states here in the US, there has been nothing more impactful in my life than living in you know different places. I'm 
thrilled, absolutely thrilled with the opportunities that are presented to people in this day and age. And more importantly, you out there watching this, you know, this can help you build a lifestyle that isn't defined by work. And if you're not living that lifestyle right now, you can check out below in the resources in the description for the Remote Job Club and a bunch of my other free resources. I've got programs that help people get there to find remote work so that they can do these kind of things. Uh, and even in the free version of the Remote Job Club, you'll get access to 4,000 plus remote jobs that are updated weekly and, or actually updated daily. Take that back daily and a preview of my Road to Remote course. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, awesome. Go check the description. If you want to go move to one of these places, go check it out. And there's a bunch of different lists online that'll, sh that'll tell you exactly who is offering these and, and how that's changing. So until next time, keep wandering. You're not lost.